In this video, I want to take a look at an introduction to sampling. Now, as we work through this video and the slides in this video, we're just going to take a look at some advantages and disadvantages to each sampling method. But before we do that, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages to a census and a sample. So for a census here, we only have one advantage really, and that is that we would obtain a completely accurate result, or we should get a completely accurate result. Okay. The disadvantages though to a census is that it's expensive and time consuming because we're taking in so much data. We wouldn't want to use a census if we're testing and that leads to a destroyed item. Obviously that wouldn't make sense. You don't want to destroy all your stock, for example. So a census in that case would not be a good idea. And then finally, like we already mentioned, a census requires a large amount of data to be processed, which isn't the best. Obviously that's time consuming. You need someone who's quite handy with data to kind of look at that. So that obviously causes a bit of an issue and we've put that down as a disadvantage. Okay, so that's for a census there. Taking a look at a sample now. So for the advantages here, we have a few more. So we'd say that it's not as time consuming or expensive. It requires fewer people and there's less data to process. So like we saw with a census, there was a lot of data to process. With a sample, not as much data to process. So that's always an advantage. But the disadvantages here in this case for sample then is that the data may not be as accurate or might not be as accurate as what we just say there. And then finally, the sample may not be large enough to give us an accurate representation of small subgroups of the population. Okay, so that's what we'd say there for the advantages and disadvantages for a sample. And finally, before we take a look at the individual sampling methods, let's just take a look at some terminology here that will come up quite a bit for each individual method. So this is looking at sampling units and sampling frames. So we say the individual units of a population are what we call a sampling unit, and then the sampling units can be named or numbered to form a sampling frame there. Starting off with our first sampling method of random sampling. So the advantages here for random sampling is that it's easy to implement and it's cheap for small populations. Another advantage through random sampling is that it's free of bias. And then finally, we say that each sampling unit is equally likely to be selected. However, the disadvantages to random sampling is that it requires a sampling frame and it's not suitable with large populations. Okay, so that's what we'd say there for the advantages and disadvantages for random sampling. Taking a look at systematic sampling now, so we have two advantages here. The first one being that it's simple and easy to use, and then the other advantage is that it's suitable for large samples and populations. However, we do have two disadvantages for systematic sampling. The first being that it requires a sampling frame. And then the second disadvantage being that bias can be introduced if the sampling frame is not random. Taking a look at stratified sampling now, so we have two advantages for stratified sampling. The first advantage here is that it guarantees a proportional representation of groups within a population. And then the second advantage here is that stratified sampling accurately reflects the population structure. But we also have two disadvantages for stratified sampling. The first disadvantage here is that selection within each stratum has the same disadvantage as random sampling. Okay, so go back to the random sampling section just to see those disadvantages. And then the second disadvantage here is that the population must be classified into distinct strata. Okay, so that's the advantages and disadvantages there for stratified sampling. Taking a look at opportunity sampling now, which you might also know as convenience sampling. So we have two advantages here. The first one being that it's quick and easy to carry out. And then the second advantage is that it's cheap or inexpensive. So both of those are obviously good um, depending on your time or budget. And then for disadvantages here, well, it's dependent on the skills and qualities of the researcher. Now that might not necessarily be a disadvantage, but I would say that more than likely it will be a disadvantage. And then we'd also say for a disadvantage that it's unlikely to provide a representative sample there. So finish with here, let's take a look at quota sampling. Now we have quite a few different advantages and disadvantages for quota sampling. So if we begin with the advantages here, then the first thing we can say is that it doesn't require a sampling frame. We can also say that it's quick, cheap, and easy to perform. We can say that it allows for a small sample to still be representative of the population. And then finally, it makes for easy comparisons between different groups within a population. But we do have some disadvantages here for quota sampling. So the first one being that the population needs to be divided into groups, which can be costly or time consuming. As a follow on from that, depending on the research, more groups might need to be added which can then increase the cost or add extra time needed to perform the sampling or research. And then finally, our last disadvantage here is that this would then introduce um, 
bias potentially as we're doing non-random sampling and that can introduce bias there okay and there we have it so that brings us to the end of this video on an introduction to sampling i know there was quite a lot of talk in this and not much maths which you might see a little bit more as we work through the applied videos particularly for stats however hopefully you have still found this helpful so in the next video we're going to take a look at exam revision for data collection and sampling